And man, take a look at this awesome, awesome coaster. Uh, pretty good details. I made this from scratch using free software, auto fusion and super slicer uh, and octo print and an ender six. Hi guys, today we're gonna do a real quick tutorial on how to use Fusion 360 for beginners. So let's go ahead and make a coaster with a custom logo. All right, it can be anything you can download on the Google or it can be your own logo, blah, blah, blah. Now go ahead and open a new design in Fusion 360. If you don't have this software, you can download this for free. Go ahead and install the program, new design. So to make a coaster, we will want a some kind of cylinder if you wanna make a rounded coaster like I do. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose the cylinder and you're gonna be able to choose the X, Y, Z axis. It doesn't really matter too much because you can always rotate it when you final print it, but I'm gonna go ahead and choose this right here. I think it's the X. And we go ahead and choose the center point. And you can go ahead and specify using the mouse, but I'm gonna go ahead and set it to diameter of 85 millimeters, which I find it pretty good. And then as far as uh, how thick the coaster is, I'm gonna go ahead and set it to three millimeters, all right? So I've got a coaster, a blank coaster that I can pretty much print out, all right? Wasn't that really, really easy? Now, if you wanted to put your custom logo, um, if you have an SVG file, uh, you can go ahead and insert that. Now, most image files uh, you download on the internet are not going to support that. So let's go ahead and download a random image. I'm gonna actually do We Bear uh, Bears, all right? I'm gonna do We Bear Bears, go to images. I'm gonna go ahead and select an image that I wanna print. All right, actually, I actually did download one here. So let's say I wanna do uh, this We Bear Bear. It's a PNG file. Now this, you can't import directly into Fusion 360 because if you do that, I'm gonna to have to actually convert this into SVG. So for PNG files, you actually have to resave it uh, as JPEG, so I'm gonna go ahead and open this in Photoshop, all right? If you don't have Photoshop, you can use uh, any other program. You should be able to resave it as JPEG. And then we're gonna reopen it up. So PNG files, you wanna convert it to JPEG first. So I'm just gonna simply open it up and all I'm gonna do is go ahead and save as. I'm gonna go ahead and put it in um, one of my folders here. And I'm gonna set it as the largest file possible. Doesn't really matter. So I have it a JPEG. You don't have to use Photoshop again. You can use any kind of, you can use any kind of simple photo editing program, right? So once you have the JPEG, you'll need to also get Inkscape, right? You can't just use Photoshop to do it uh, because I'll show you here. So go ahead and download Inkscape. It's a free, it's, um, you'll need to actually trace it. Uh, with Photoshop, you have to do that manually. With Inkscape, you'll be able to do that automatically. So go ahead and download Inkscape 1.1 uh, or the latest version. It's available for Mac, Linux, and uh, Windows. Go ahead and install it. Let's go ahead and run the program, Inkscape. And you're gonna go ahead and click on New Document. And you're gonna go to New Open. And go ahead and find that iSpare.jpg. Open. Okay, hit OK. All right, and you'll find this uh, JPEG file of the We Bear Bear Ice Bar. Uh, so next, what you're going to do is go to path and trace bitmap. What this will do is actually virtually trace the lines and will give you a usable 3D SVG file. I know it sounds confusing, but this is actually the simplest way you can do it. Set the threshold up here uh, to 0 0.8. All right, and go ahead and apply. And you can go ahead and zoom out. Let me see. Um, how do I zoom out? Okay, control. Control scroll, or you can do uh, minus or plus. And you can go ahead and move this original one here and hit apply again. And you'll see that this, this appeared here. You see that I made a um, bitmap trace of this original file here. So you don't need this anymore. Now, now I find bright threshold 0 0.8 usually does the job for everything, but you can mess with the values here to optimize, but this just worked out really good for me. So I'm gonna just delete this, all right? I'm gonna go ahead and put the, I'm gonna go ahead and select the new, go ahead and select the new uh, generated image trace maps. All right, you're gonna put that in there. Now you're gonna go ahead and save as, 
an SVG file. I'm going to save it as ice bear underscore SVG. Okay. I actually did it before, so I have it overriding it. But once you have done, you can go ahead and close out of Inkscape. Uh, and you can go back to, you can go back to Autodesk. Now we're going to go into insert, go to insert SVG. I'll insert from my computer. I'm going to go ahead and find that file. Icepair.svg. And go ahead and zoom out using the scroll key. Oh, sorry. Go ahead and choose where you want to put on the axis. So I'm going to put it on the surface. You'll see it's grayed out. So I'm going to put it on the surface of my new coaster. And boom, chop, And go ahead and, and go ahead and zoom out all the way. And you will see the image. Now you can go ahead and rotate this image the way you want it, like that. And you can go ahead and use this button to make it small. And you can go ahead and recenter it using this button here. And I'm going to make it even smaller, smaller, and something around here, maybe like that. And I can go ahead and zoom back in. And this will allow me to really dial down how I want it. I want it slightly right about there and right about there. All right. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. Now you have an ice bear, right? Now you can go ahead and use this top right here to see the different view. Now you see the ice bear is there, but there's nothing, but because it's still in 2D, you're not gonna be able to see it. So we're gonna have to actually dig into the coaster or dig up. But since we're gonna put a cup on top of it, we're gonna dig into it. So the way to do that, let me go ahead and give you that here. We're gonna go select the bear, all right? Select all the bear, make sure everything you want, make sure you, everything you want to depress is selected. And I'm going to go ahead and go up here to solid and I'm going to select this extrude button. What this allows you to do, let's say you do five, it's going to make the bear go up like that. But we don't want that. We want to actually do the opposite. So uh, for this to show up, I try, I'll probably recommend negative one millimeter. And we can go ahead and take a look how deep that cut is. So we're cutting back into the coaster look at that that looks pretty good now you see i missed the arms and stuff so i'm gonna have to actually go back so i'm gonna go back and select one at a time and i'm gonna hold down control button to se select the individual parts um i want to make it go down all right so like that so this way i can still see the eyes uh the nose all right and then i'm gonna go back to solid and hit the extrude button and put negative one, hit enter. And let's go ahead and take a look here. And you can see, I can actually see the eyes. I can see the nose and that looks flawless. All right, so we got our coaster, a custom ice bear coaster, All right? You can do this with any logo image, um, make your own coasters, All right? You may want to play with the different shapes. If you want to do different shapes, obviously use all these different shapes. So I'm going to go ahead and export this file uh, as a 3D file, printable file. Uh, you can use SDL, object. I usually just use your object, but you can use anything. I'm going, ahead, uh, I'm going to go ahead and export as an object file. All right, export. And this should take like a minute or two. So that's been done. Um, I'm going to go ahead and print this out. Now you want to use your slicer. So let me go ahead and import it into my slicer. I'm using super slicer, which I recommend by the way, I'm going to go to import an object file. And you can also use Cura. I used to use Cura, but I like super slicer more. And you can see that now I have a uh, nice coaster here that I can print out. That's going to look like that. I'm going to go ahead and use a white filament. I'm using an Ender six. Uh, eSun PLA, white eSun PLA. And let's go ahead and slice that. And that's going to show me exactly. I, I usually use a 30% infill gyroid uh, pattern. See the gyroid pattern? I feel like it's the strongest for small projects like this. You can put like 10% or 5%. It should still be strong enough. And that's going to be my finished product. It's going to take me an hour and 56 minutes. Let's go ahead and print out. For printing, I'm using uh, OctoPrint. But because I'm actually printing something else today, I'm not going to be able to show you the settings, but I usually do 260 degrees Celsius for tool in bed.
And man, take a look at this awesome, awesome coaster. If you want to see more interesting projects, I'm going to be uploading more. If you want to see other tutorials, uh, hold on and you'll see some recommended videos if you're seeing this in the future. Have a great day. Hit the like and subscribe and I'll see you on the next one.